The average gambler is $17,000 in debt. Now imagine having access to a casino in your pocket 24 hours a day. Suddenly, it all gets a little scarier. But gambling ads are popping up everywhere now, promoting platforms that are designed to get you hooked as quickly as possible, and they use science to keep you playing even when you're losing. These platforms are dangerous. So I want to explore how we got here and even try out one of the platforms to see how bad it really is. I'm gonna be honest, I really don't understand gambling. I've been to a casino maybe three or four times, done online gambling a solid once, and almost always I've lost my money, so I don't really like to gamble. That being said, I know there's something going on here. So we're gonna have to start from the beginning. In the history of gambling, there's a ton of uncertainty. The one thing we do know for sure is that there's evidence of gambling as far back as about 4,000 years ago. For that entire time, there have been people against it too. But here's the thing, that was way before we had the internet, ages before Las Vegas even existed, and most importantly, way before we even had money. So gambling looked a little bit different back then. Back then it was actually illegal to gamble if you were poor, which is actually really funny if you look back on it now. As Europeans came over to America, practices like these came with them. But because of the problems that places like New Orleans and San Francisco saw with gambling as wealth came into their cities, it got banned nearly all across the country. And as we all know, all these laws worked perfectly and it was all happily ever after. Not really. Mobs ran America back then and gambling was still in full force. As the depression popped up and prohibition died, the bans on gambling went away too, ironically starting with Nevada. By 1945, many mobsters were setting up casinos and hotels in Las Vegas to avoid the enforcement of the laws coming from the other states. Just think of that Robert De Niro movie called Casino and you basically have all the things you need to know. I don't think I need to explain that these casinos weren't really great. Imagine a room that's packed full of tables and people and lined around the edges with various machines. Oh, and the mobs, right, they would kick your knees in. But enter Howard Hughes in the 60s. He, among other investors, bought up a lot of the casinos throughout Vegas, changing the reputation for the better. And then when Caesars Palace opened in 1966, it was different from anything ever seen before in Vegas. Designer Jay Sarno, a known gambler and drinker, understood the mindset of gamblers like him, so he built a casino to capitalize on it. The idea was that as you made your way through, you'd be presented with a ton of opportunities to put down a small five or $10 bet. As you're there for a week, those $5 bets are gonna add up a lot, and more often than not, you're probably gonna keep playing. And one of the biggest choices was that instead of packing in a bunch of machines, everything was spread out and made to feel lively, 24 hours a day. Smells of addiction, doesn't it? So is that it then? I can't be the only one that thinks that this is a bad place to leave the story. Gambling used to suck, and now because it's only addictive, it's a good thing? I think there might be more going on here. If you think about addiction, you probably default to drugs or alcohol. But but you might not know that gambling is by far the deadliest addiction of all. And there's a really big reason for this. So let's start by thinking about when you pick up a $5 bill on the ground. That's a good moment, right? That's pretty cool. But what about when you expect to have $5 in your wallet and it's not there? That's incredibly frustrating. You lost money, where did it go? This is loss aversion in action and you probably didn't even realize it. The data shows that people value losses about twice as heavily as they value wins. Meaning you'd need to find at least eight $10 bill in order to offset the pain of losing that same $5 bill. When you apply this to gambling, the sport of losing money, you're constantly fighting an uphill battle trying to beat out loss aversion. This is why a lot of casinos offer you sign up bonuses to get you started. Let's say it's 20 bucks. Chances are you're probably gonna gamble that away pretty irresponsibly because it's free money. But psychologically, you've now lost $20 and you're gonna have to make up 40 bucks to feel like you've won. So yeah, gambling is addiction by design. Now that we've learned about the entire gambling industry, I think we should take a look more specifically at online gambling. In the early 2000s, the dot-com boom took over the world. At that time, anything that could be brought online was brought online. Games like poker and blackjack had been on computers for years, but nothing allowed you to put up real money for betting. Until 1994, when Intracasino was launched. In 1994, not that many people had access to the internet. The data is like less than 1% of the world. So how did they go from that 
to a $65 billion online gambling industry in just like 30 years. Well, if you take a look at Intercasino's homepage, you can see where some of the doubt began to form. Where was your money going? How could you withdraw your winnings? And is it even legit? This is a time when the internet was still thought to be a fad. So building user trust was just really, really difficult. But looking at their header, it says everything you need to know. Their pitch was strong enough that it just didn't matter to most people. Gambling in casinos limits the amount of time that you can spend. You might have places to go or even live far away from the nearest casino. But having quick access to a casino in the comfort of your home, now that solves a problem. A lot of companies caught on to this opportunity very quickly and as the internet grew, more and more casinos started to pop up. The industry became super competitive and they picked up on the problems that existed with casinos like Intra Casino. So they added more visuals to make them match the casinos you'd grown to love in the real world. They made them more trustworthy and with the advancement of 3D and VR technology, things began to look really real. It's like you're sitting at home, but you're really in a real casino. So what makes for a successful online gambling platform? When you think about it, there are no social barriers to playing online. No one knows you're there. No one knows you're doing it. So you can play as much or as little as you want. And if the marketing can get you in, well, that's where the problem is. So they have programs in place that if you haven't placed a bet in a while, they'll offer you free plays or better chances of winning. All of that with the knowledge that once you make your first bet, you're probably going to keep going. Even their wording, risk-free, higher chance of winning and even try today before the offer expires, it's manufactured FOMO. People are winning, so why aren't you playing? Speaking of the marketing, I think this is a good time for me to try out one of these platforms. Like I said, I've only ever done online gambling one time and I lost my money pretty quickly. I think I bet on a hockey game and watched as the goals were getting scored that my money that I could take out was just going down and down and down. I'm going to put 50 bucks in and I'm going to see how often they try and hook me in, how many free spins they get me, and if I'm actually even going to win a single penny. I decided to try out the platform that's popular with Twitch streamers called Stake. The first thing that I'm greeted with when I go on this website is literally a VIP progress bar showing that I'm in the bronze status. And it shows you can get up to Diamond. Diamond gives you better benefits, better chances of winning, blah, blah, blah. To me, that's super scummy, super sketchy. Why would I want that if I'm, you know, trying to be a responsible gambler? And that was pretty concerning, but I pushed through and I decided to play a familiar game called Plinko. Yeah, I can really see how these games will hook you in. Look at that. I really haven't lost anything yet. So let's, let's up the bet, see what happens. Stop it, keep upping it, whatever. See what happens. After playing a whole bunch and not really losing any money, I got pretty overconfident and decided to play the popular game called Crash. And it went scary well. Man, I can I can feel it. Like there's just a desire to win here. This is all so manufactured. You feel like you're in control, but you're really, really not. Like, look at this. Look how much money is flowing in. I might actually get the win on this one. I did. Bro, that's fucked up. I'm just saying, it makes me feel really gross. I was making money left, right, and center, and I thought that I actually had a strategy that would let me win. <laughs> Make like a penny at a time doing this, I think. <laughs> if you just immediately click cash out. Except the casino always wins, and I forgot that. There's like, I can feel it within me that I feel like I can win this and it's making me super uncomfortable. But like my heart's beating and it's making me, I kind of wish I hadn't done this because it's just weird feeling. After a while I was playing and I thought I was beating the system, how naive I was, and I'd almost doubled my money. Except for one small thing happened. I started losing. The greed kicks in, hey? Six, I literally could have taken out 60 there. But I didn't. Why? Because it's gonna keep going higher. The greed is insane, man. I'm glad that I'm losing because this money is just like depleting, but it still like feels fake. All right, this is gonna be pretty close to my last one, I think, because with all those wins came, now it's not happening. Even with all the research I did for this video, I fell into the traps that they had set for me. Gambling apps are designed to be addictive, and let me tell you, they work. What I just saw scares the absolute shit out of me because people are putting in hundreds. This pot that I'm looking at right now has $1,700 going in. $1,700, how many people are gonna lose money right now? It gave me the belief that I could actually win, and I got cocky because my psychology, I followed what I believed was happening here. And then I lost all of the winnings, everything I had, 50 bucks in a matter of what, five bets? This is 
Scary, man. Scary stuff. I mentioned earlier that lower income people are less likely to gamble, but way more likely to get addicted to gambling. And I want to unpack that a bit more. Just think about it. If you're offered a $20 sign up bonus and you're making a million dollars a year, you probably don't care. But what about if you're only making $15 an hour? 20 bucks of free money is more than you make in an hour. If you can quickly double it, then that's almost three hours of your time saved. There's an appeal and a pathway that makes people think that they can save a ton of time so they get in. Loss aversion kicks in. You just lost 20 bucks. You're gonna have to spend this much time to make it up. So you added more money and then you're wasting away hours of your life gambling. Real life casinos, online gambling platforms, they all know this and they try and get you in. And they have a bunch of different ways of doing this too. Like offering millions of dollars in gambling credits to streamers and allowing them to use a modified version of the platform that makes them win more often in exchange for them streaming to millions of viewers. Seeing the winnings is super appealing. So even though they tell you not to gamble, people sign up and lose a lot of money. And if you look around Nelk, Steve will do it, XQC, Train, how many people were sponsored by Stake when they were most popular? This is a huge business and there's probably a big reason why the government doesn't care that much, but why are people allowed to play games like this on stream? And more importantly, we should be more deliberate about educating people about the dangers of gambling. So be smarter than the system and you'll probably be fine. If you enjoyed this video, then you're probably gonna like this video I made about the addictive science behind fast food. I wanna make a ton more videos like this, so if you enjoyed, please be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next week. Ah, fly, go.